Hello, my name is Don and welcome to episode 36 of Follow Follow, my football manager Let's Play with Rangers. I've brought you back about two weeks earlier than planned. There's no change to today's game, but I just wanted to sort of let you see and discuss the sort of the Brexit situation. It looks like we've got a soft Brexit uh, with no changes to the current work permit system and no new restrictions on European Union players. So I'm not sure how that's going to progress for Scottish players going abroad or European players coming in in the future of this save. Uh, it looks like there's no change currently, uh, which I'm finding a bit confusing, but nonetheless, as you were, is what I'm taking it as, and I will be back with the run-up to the Man City game in just a second. Again, we still haven't made it to that Man City game. The board requested to come, me to go and speak to them about an increase in transfer budget. Uh, I said, yeah, that'd be a great idea. I was tempted to just say I think it'd be better invested elsewhere, but what I'm kind of hoping is... I'm not expecting to spend a lot in January, to be honest. There depends on if a big player comes up on the transfer list, obviously I'm going to go for them, but I think most of my transfer deals for January are already done. Um, there's one more I would like to get in, but there was an issue with wages. That will be addressed at a later date. The other thing is, is I'm currently over my wage budget, so what I'm probably going to do is send an absolute load of this onto the wage bill, just so they're a bit happier with that. Um, the board is obviously getting a bit more happier with me now. They're now pleased with my management of the team, so that's good. Uh, so we've got a full twenty million to spend in January. I am not. The chances of me spending twenty million in January is slim. But I just thought I'd bring you back, just let you see that this money is legit and it sort of came about legit. I've not requested this money this time, like I did uh, last season. The board have came to me and said, do you want it? And I've just not declined it. So I am just wanted to show you guys that. We're about three games away from Man City. So I will now fast forward to that. Again, I'm just bringing you back slightly earlier. We're now one, day, uh, one game away from Man City, just under United at home. But I just thought this was interesting. Athletic Bilbao have hired Brendan Rodgers paying Celtic a compensation fee of $7.25 million. That's a lot of money. I was sort of linked quite heavily with this job, I remained silent and didn't even get an interview which I'm a bit miffed at when, if you compare my record to Roger since I took over, uh, I think I'm a bit harsh on not being a front runner against him. Nonetheless, uh, Brendan's away from Celtic now which will actually weaken Celtic in my opinion. The favourite right now seems to be Ray McKinnon of Dundee United. Um, other than that, really nothing really to talk about. I guess I wish him the best at Bilbao. Uh, it's an interesting club. Uh, Lennon's obviously saying he doesn't want to go back to Celtic as well. He is it's still at Easter Road and he's doing very well at Easter Road, of course. I really wouldn't mind him moving to Celtic. That might be a different story. Nonetheless, I'm going to go get this Dundee United game done and then I'll bring you back. And as soon as I complain about that, we've been offered a job interview in Spain. Uh, I might actually take the interview and then decline uh, the role if the board approach me. Now the reason why I'm going to do that is to try and just give myself a bit of more leeway with the board with uh, pursuing things that I want to pursue with the team. Like There's a lot of things I want to pursue. Um, stadium, youth facilities, training facilities, obviously I can't do them until next month when they actually improve. But I would like to get a feeder team for work permits for example as well. All that sort of stuff. So I think this is our opportunity to go and do that. So I'm going to accept the interview, I'm going to go to the interview and then when the board come at me and say, would you go out with the run for the job, I will accept that and try and negotiate some things that I've been trying to get. But with the relationship with the board being a bit tempered, it's been a bit awkward. And at the same time, this team's actually higher in the league in uh, La Liga compared to um, Bilbao. So actually a better offer than the one that Brendan just got which is interesting um, so I've just complained about it and now we've got a better offer so that's a uh, I've moaned it in if you like but again I've declined every interview up until this point in this series but because of the strain that we've had with the board earlier on in the season I think it's the right time to go for an interview and just maybe give them a fright and here we are the Battle of Britain not only is it the Battle of Britain but it's one hell of a battle for this group. If we go to Group D, uh, which is here, Atletico are already through. They have the group wrapped up. One point separates other three teams in this group. 
that's maybe a bit of a spoiler for other results but I'm going to cover that in a second I want to sort of get through this if we draw we can finish second or third depending on the result with Benfica if we win we're through any other result is third or fourth now I think we have the advantage over Benfica on head to head if they draw and we lose so this is an interesting situation uh, where are they playing they're playing at Atletico so hopefully that makes a bit of a difference I'm just going to get rid of this notification as you see they're under 18s absolutely smashed our youth team we did get 6 points but a minus 13 goal difference but of course a lot of my good young players are out on loan so I was never that concerned about that competition um, I think they actually had two small wins and four big losses, so that makes sense for their goal difference. Results-wise, the last game we had was the Hibs game. After that, we responded with a 5-0 win at Benfica. Absolutely blistering performance. Well, it was, sorry, it was at Ibrox, but against Benfica. I've got no idea where this came from. At the end of the match, I had the option to say, why can you not play like this consistently? consistently and I went with it. Now I did make some slight tactical tweaks for this but the tweaks that started happening were more for a uh, the part of this whole game. So I have made some tactical tweaks. Uh, I can't remember what they all are. I think goalkeeper distribution, uh, distribution is one of them. Uh, that is now working correctly to the way I intended it to. I'm not sure why it was set to what it was but it wasn't what I remember setting it to. But obviously it's changed. Um, Pozzabon scored a hat-trick against part of Fizzle for us to win. Uh, at home to them that was nice for him to get a game and score a hat trick he hadn't scored for a long time before that um, but yeah so two good performances in a row then we had an international break and I just decided you know what let's get a friendly in and I actually arranged this before the Benfica game because I was so unhappy with how we were performing I thought let's just have a game against weaker opposition where we can just absolutely smash someone while players are away on international duty and we won 4-1 irrelevant really but it is what it is then we had Inverness Cali this was a scrappy performance we were very good in the second half very poor in the first we got a goal through a bizarre own goal um, it was a cross across the goal Ozturk was always going to tap it in a player just slides right through the back and match actually shouted for a penalty the ball ball hit the goalkeeper on the back side and went in then we lost 3-0 to Atletico now this if we'd won this we would have sealed the last 16 uh, we played very well in the first half we were Unlucky in really not going at half time in the lead. They could have said the same, they had chances as well, of course. And the second half, they just came out. Bentaleb's goal was sensational, and Grim, uh, Kevin Gamiro was just unplayable for a little spell, and it resulted in a 3 0 defeat, which I think was very harsh on us. We bounced back though with a 4 0 win against Dundee. Very good performance overall, very happy with it. As you see, we took advantage of them having a man down as well. Once they were a man down, we we just went ham. Uh, Ozturk scored a broken free kick. Run came off the bench and scored. Mackay scored. Unkadu scored as well. Very good. Then Rafe, which was about the time of the Brexit announcement, if I remember correctly, um, we won 2-0. Two, two goals from uh, Unkadu, if I can get it out of my mouth. And then we had Dundee United. Four home games in a row it was. But three goal games with a clean sheet and all three and scoring goals in all three as well. This one, we played really well and we just could not break that door down. Eventually we scored when it went overload, made some subs, freshened things up. But the team that was played in this game was very much with an eye on the City game today because of the importance. As you see, Declan Rice in there, Devlin was in there, but that was just on the basis of he was the fitter of the two centre-backs and the other two centre-backs should be fit for this game. Ronan Miller was in, now that was a force change. Tavernier got injured, so Ronan Miller had to play. Uh, Brian Davidson was in Therese Baines James McArthur and Therese Rossiter for example Wayne Rooney in for Ravel Morrison Ravel Morrison came on but he came on for Lorenko while Vasilis came on for Rooney so that leaves us here the league table is like so we're three points behind Hibs with a vastly worse goal difference which is worrying uh, I don't think I've ever been a, in this series anyway I don't think I've been in this title race without a goal difference advantage and again, if I remember correctly, they are absolutely blitzing us. They're only two goals scored more than us, but a much better defence, which is where I spent a lot of money in the summer. And the goalkeeper, of course, 
I've tried to address that in January, we'll cover that in January, I probably won't have another episode between now and after the January window, I might, depending on what games are there, I haven't looked at the schedule, Celtic though, interestingly, sitting in fifth, they do have two games in hand about the teams above them, but even if they win them, they're only going to be on 31 points, which is a long way short of us and Hibs, so for whatever reason, they just have not had any form this year, now they are confirmed as through in the Europa League, they cannot be knocked out. So they have got to the next round of the Europa League. I don't know if that's maybe had an effect on them. It didn't last season. But there's certainly something not right at Celtic Park this season. Brendan Rodgers is obviously now gone. I think if he didn't go when he did, he probably would have been sacked not long afterwards. Uh, given this kind of level of performance to be, at best, 11 points behind second place after 17 games is just not acceptable for an old firm club. Kilmarnock sitting bottom of the table. They have actually given us a couple of tough games, so I'm a bit surprised to see them down there. But they are bottom of the table, is uh, seven points adrift of Dundee United, who have a game in hand as well. Uh, I think that will be against Celtic, though, so let's call that an irrelevant game in hand. Um, transfer wise, now try and please ignore everything I'm trying to skip to it as quickly as possible. Now, I brought in some staff, I just brought in two sports scientists, I brought Adrian Corbett, who was of MK Dons, he cost me 11k to bring him in. And I brought in Chris Hattersley, who was previously at Sheffield Wednesday, but was away from the club at the time that we brought him in. My logic with bringing these two in was just basically, our fitness was so poor and I thought, we've got two good fitness coaches, we've got a decent physio department, let's try bringing in some sports scientists and seeing if that helps. We did have a head sports scientist, so... I wasn't sure how the sports scientists thing works, I think that's a thing quite well across the community, uh, but we had the money there, we had the allowance there, so I thought let's just bring them in. So this is a huge game, it's not just a huge game, but the other game is a huge game. Pep Guardiola has been very appreciative of me towards coming into this game. They have one hell of a team by the way, just some absolutely different class players. Just look at that team. Just different gravy. Um, I'm very nervous going into this game, which is uncharacteristic of me. Uh, and to be honest, I don't really know what to expect. Uh, let's see what happens. It's a similar position to what we're in last year. We need the result to go our way elsewhere. The difference is if it goes wrong this year, we can finish fourth. And that's a massive thing. And the thing is, is Atletico Madrid now have nothing to play for. They have won the group. Nobody can catch them. So my worry is that City are going to do us an absolute do in there and Benfica are going to nick a 1-0 win. And then we finish fourth. And we have no European football for the latter part of next season. Well, the latter part of this season, sorry. Nonetheless, I'm going to go pick my team and I'll be back in just a second. And we're back. So I elected my team, uber defensive. Media and the bouquet is going against us. Um, they have so much talent, it's not surprising. Uh, and our form away from home in Europe has been atrocious over the past couple of seasons. Very nervous going into it, and my formation sort of reflects that. It's a very defensive minded 4 2 3 1. 4 2 3 1. It's a very defensive minded 4 3 3, sorry. Um, with the two holding midfielders, Ravel Morris, and slightly more advanced with. The only real attacking threat in this team is ever going to be Zach Rudden. I'm hoping that maybe Mackay Nicholson can get up there eventually. But at the same time, I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, I've sort of decided the best way to do this is to play for 0-0. Um, I'm not really sure if there's anything more I can do because we can't play for a win really because I think if we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with City, we're just going to get our backsides handed to us. Just gonna get some man marking done as well. Um, I've marked tighter is one of the tactical changes I made with my other tactic, so I'm hoping it works here. Uh, mark tighter. I'm actually gonna get him to do Griezmann, just to try and take away that threat a little bit. And. Yeah, you've got Griezmann and you've got De Bruyne. Uh, ok, 
okay, I'm happy with that. Let's get into the game. I've also got the latest scores up. I went into AI, just watched a youth team game, and I set that up so I didn't have to set it up in this game. Uh, I like to watch my youth teams play quite a regular. It's something that I think benefits the whole setup of the club. And the reason why I've got Ross at our support and with Griezmann is just simply because Ronan Miller's very inexperienced, particularly at this level, but obviously we have no other right back options really. Uh, I mean, I could have brought in Joe Riley, but he's not played a game since uh, he picked up that injury, so I don't know if he would be ready. It's a good ball in, and Morata with the strike. Benfica already one down, so that's good. Um, Romelu Lukaku scoring for Atletico Madrid. City absolutely all over us right now. And it's Leroy Sani with the shot this time. One of the players that I didn't mark. Simply because I just ran out of players to mark him, and I don't like marking with my fullbacks. I still feel I need them to do some sort of attacking presence. I've sort of got this as an extra tactic to to um, be there as a sort of third defensive tactic but sadly we're now 1-0 well second defensive tactic but sadly we're now 1-0 down uh, just a lovely header down and nobody on De Bruyne Think number 14's Ozturk, he went out, no way that's Ravel Morrison number 14. He went out to try and close the angle but failed to do so. Think a draw is good enough for third even if uh, Benfica draw. Because I'm pretty sure we've got the head to head record on them. Which is I'm pretty sure how this competition works, I might be wrong. Uh, be a bit frustrating if it's goal difference because we have a pretty awful goal difference because we obviously had the big loss in Madrid um, uh, I'm just going to come and say uh, there's nothing to lose just go and give it your best shot Just I don't really know what to say <laughs> um, the fact that it's only one I'm fairly happy with uh, maybe shows where we're at right now, the fact that we're just sitting here defensive except in a 1-0 defeat, but I could go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but I think they would just carve us open. Uh, can we get something on the counter, though? Rudd in. Uh, nope, he falls asleep with the ball. Varane out to Leroy Sani. He's been a very big threat for them today, but he's obviously their attacking threat that I've not marked, so I'm expecting that. Um, and at the same time, he's got the pace to burn, so Baines can't really come inside with him because he'll just get absolutely done. And Baines is obviously very senior now, he's not got the legs that he used to. So a good ball into Ozturk, the keeper spilled it, but no white shirt following in. And City get it clear. Atletico down to 10 now as well. I'm going to go the slightly less defensive 4-5-1. Four, uh, four, um, just to try and get a bit more attack about us. I've just a bit more grit. Uh, we'll bring on Declan Rice for MacArthur. Uh, the other thing to note is you'll see all these little yellow symbols. That's just me making notes now. I've been watching a few other channels. And one of the things that I noticed that other people do that I don't do is make a lot of notes. I never really seen the benefit of the note system, but I forget a lot of things. And all these people that were sort of doing stuff with notes. Uh, where's my latest scores gone? Uh, latest scores, latest scores, latest scores. That's exactly why I didn't do it because I can never find the menus. That's why I went, when I was watching the youth team in the last a couple of games ago, I just flicked it up there because I knew how important this game would be, and I don't don't want to tally about trying to find. A simple menu that I can never find. Vasilis. Rudden. He's falling asleep on the ball again, hasn't he? Gonna have to bring him off. Um, I've not even got the experience of Wayne Rooney up there because he's injured. Insigne. It's a great ball to Leroy Sani who's got acres of space and he scored. No, he's hit the post. He's 
been probably the player of the game for me so far, Leroy Sani. Been very good. Obviously, he's had a bit more space than the other City players, and that's not an ideal thing to do. Is give a City a team of this quality to have even one or two players with a bit more space, but I don't really know what more I could do unless I just literally put ten behind the ball, and I think we still needed to have some attacking threat. doesn't look like we're going to get back into this game guys unfortunately I maybe could have gone into the 4 2 when we made the last sub but it was a big gamble when I brought Declan Rice on it sort of took away that option I think uh, have they got another goal on them that's what I've got now Benfica have equalised in the 93rd minute as City scored again um, so it now does have to go down to head to head Please go to head to head. I'm pretty sure it does. Just going to close that off so I don't have to see it. Because I don't want to have them come in like. Oh, that's a huge deflection. That's going wide as well, and it's a huge deflection off Sasso. He knows nothing about it. Hits the post and goes in. And it's 2 0 to City. Uh, so we've lost 2-0 here. I think this is the third or fourth live come game we've lost in a row. Uh, I'm just going to calmly say that I'm not too concerned about the result because I played so defensively. It does go to head-to-head. -head or goal scored. One of the two. Either way, it doesn't matter. We're through to at least the Europa League. Um, have we actually got a draw date for that? Uh, this is the guy I'm scouting just now. I couldn't agree wages with him initially and since then I've not been able to agree a few with the other team. They sort of just laugh at everything. Uh, we've got Million on trial, so that was just a thing there. Uh, okay, we've not got a date for the draw. Um, not sure why. Maybe it's because other games have still got to play because obviously they've got the, the Wednesday Champions League games and the... Thursday Europa League games uh, Celtic obviously already threw to that draw as well so we'll have two Scottish teams in that draw again uh, of course we've got the improved coefficients for next season as well which gives us two teams into the Champions League one direct into the group stage and one in two runners up qualifiers which is slightly different than the qualifiers we've had this year uh, so that will be good to experience hopefully we can nick that automatic place and have a proper pre-season Anyway, I'm going to wrap this episode up here. Thank you very much for watching. It's another disappointing result on a live com, But hopefully they'll pick up soon. The results are improving. That was a decent result for us there. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you liked, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. And I will hopefully catch you all next time.